The National Catholic Broadcasting Council, through the kindness of our donors, presents Reflections on the Way to the Cross with Father Pat Fitzpatrick. Please welcome our host, Deacon Mike Walsh. Jesus' journey to the cross and then the tomb is a concrete illustration of God's love for humankind. Out of the love for every single person, Jesus left God the Father and emptied himself by coming to live among us. Each of us is the beloved child of God, and nowhere is that more evident than the painful, brutal journey that Jesus took to the cross. We come face to face with Christ in those who suffer. Through these stations of the cross, we follow in Jesus' footsteps from Pilate's palace to Calvary. Let us now mark ourselves with the sign of the cross and walk with Father Pat Fitzpatrick on the way to the cross. Jesus, God with us, was once a condemned criminal who stumbled, fell, got up again, and kept going to the bitter end. Jesus knew what it was to suffer. This is the cup the Father has given me, he had said. Shall I not drink it? God suffered in Jesus. God continues to suffer in millions of people. We come face to face with Christ in those who suffer. Today, we follow in Jesus' footsteps from Pilate's palace to Calvary. We mark ourselves with the sign of the cross and walk the way of the cross. Jesus on the cross is dying, soon his body will be lying in the darkness of the tomb. First station, Jesus is sentenced to death. Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to the crowd, Here is the man. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Then Pilate handed him over to be crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The religious leaders sought the death penalty for Jesus. He was more than they could take. But the death penalty was not theirs to carry out. So they brought him to Pilate. I will have him flogged and let him go, said that crowd pleaser. You're no friend of Caesar if you let him go, they replied. Crucify him, crucify him, said the crowd. They had their way. Pilate released Barabbas and sentenced Jesus to death. Mob justice. The guilty are let off. The innocent are convicted. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? God's own mother, purest maiden, sees the sinless ones in laden. Blessed fruit of blessed womb. The second station. Jesus carries his cross. Carrying the cross by himself, Jesus went out to what is called the place of the skull. A soldier at the head of the procession, a box of Roman legionaries around the prisoner, a two-meter crossbeam to which he would be nailed was placed on his shoulder. His final walk of about 600 meters 
had begun. Crosses come in different shapes and sizes. How well do I carry my cross? My health, my moods, my tensions, my handicaps, my job, my family, the way I'm treated. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? Mary's heart for him is aching As she sees her son's heart breaking So that love may be revealed The third station. Jesus falls the first time. The prophet Isaiah tells us that he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. The cross beam began to sway and Jesus staggered. In a moment he pitched forward. The beam hit the ground, hung standing for a second, then dragged him down to the cobblestones. Crosses never fit snugly onto shoulders. They get heavier with each succeeding step. We struggle to stay on our feet. We collapse under the weight of our particular cross. We fall flat on our face. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? Now at last her heart is feeling Sorrow's order, sun revealing Thoughts in many hearts concealed The fourth station. Jesus meets his mother, Mary. Simeon had said to Jesus' mother Mary, A sword will pierce your own soul too. Stations 4, 5, and 6 remind us that Jesus found encouragement and assistance along the way. Mary was there, as always, wanting to do something, anything, forced to look on helplessly. He half hoped she wouldn't have to see him like this. Yet her presence renewed his strength. How many mothers suffer with their children and for their children as they watch them struggle, see them fall, and have to let them go? This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? How could pity not awaken For the Son of God forsaken In the loneliness of death The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. The soldiers seized a man, Simon from Cyrene, who was coming in from the country they made him shoulder the cross and carry it behind Jesus. All his friends had taken off. He carried his cross unaided. A stranger from North Africa was in Jerusalem that fateful Friday. The Roman soldiers ordered him to get in line behind the criminal. Step by step, Simon, the North African, matched his stride to Jesus' painful progress. From here to Calvary, Jesus had a partner. Did Simon know whose cross he carried? We thank the Simons in our lives, those who walk with us and enable us to keep going. We are grateful for their helping hands and listening ears for shoulders to lean on. 
This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? The Sixth Station Veronica Wipes the Face of Jesus Tradition holds that Veronica, one of the holy women who accompanied our Lord to Calvary, was moved by his suffering and offered him a towel to wipe the sweat and blood from his face. When Jesus handed the cloth back to her, the image of his face remained imprinted on it. A woman in the crowd saw him coming down the road. As he drew near, she noticed how weary, marred, and disfigured he was. Undaunted by what others thought, she removed her veil, approached him, and gently wiped his grimy face. The legend says her veil retained the image of the face it touched. Did his mind go back to Simon the Pharisee's house and the woman who very publicly stood behind him weeping and bathed his feet with her tears, dried them with her hair, continued kissing his feet and anointing them? At critical moments, is it always women who show the most courage? This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? Mary's heart for him is bleeding In his blood for sinners bleeding God's new love, love is sealed the seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. Struggling, Jesus stumbles again, and we recall the prophet Isaiah telling us that the Lord will be despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmities, as one from whom others hide their face, he was despised, and we held him in no account. Too heavy a load, too long a journey. With each succeeding step, the wooden beam got heavier and heavier. Legs and arms ached. Once more, the beam began to sway. And once again, he pitched forward and downward. The Roman whips, the rough commands, the heavy effort to get up. So many people have difficulty putting one foot in front of the other. How far more, O oh Lord, how far more? One step at a time. More than halfway there now. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? It is done, she hears him crying At the moment of his dying Death by death has now been The Eighth Station Jesus meets the daughters of Jerusalem. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The women had compassion for the condemned man. Their hearts went out to him, 
knowing what awaited him at the end of the road? Was he warning them not to be part of this Jerusalem way of doing things? How many women stand outside lonely prison walls in solidarity with the condemned, denied a say in the public life of their country, victims of injustice, sidelined by the system. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? The Ninth Station Jesus Falls the Third Time As Jesus lies on the ground for a third time, we again remember the words of the prophet Isaiah who foretold that the one to come would be wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. Another fall, tempted to remain down and out. Why not give up, right here, right now? Another painful effort to get back up as Simon lifted the crossbeam for him. This reluctant recruit had become his silent partner. Uphill, the rest of the way to Calvary. Jesus got up again and kept going. So can we, with his help. We marvel at his stubborn refusal to stay down. Down to earth, yes, but never down and out. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? By the cross your vigil keeping, let me share your silent weeping. Pierce my heart with sorrow sword. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. They divided his clothes among them casting lots to decide what each should take. Calvary at last. Outside the crowded, self-absorbed city preparing for the Sabbath. Stripped naked, all dignity peeled off. A public spectacle. For many years, no place to lay his head, now no clothes to wear, nothing left to call his own. One of his own, an informer, another, a denier, the rest, nowhere near. We think about victims of war, victims of torture, Victims of the system, raped and violated, demeaned and publicly derided. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it?
The eleventh station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Crucifixion, gruesome, gory, capital punishment. Nails driven through wrists and feet. Death through loss of blood and breath. Death through suffocation. No morphine to deaden the pain. Elie Wiesel recalls the concentration camp, the day a child was hanged. His body did not weigh enough to tighten the noose around his neck. So he hung there, swaying in the desolate air. I heard a man behind me asking, where is God now? I heard a voice within me answering, where is he? Here he is, hanging here on this gallows. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? Let me bear the wounds of Jesus, drink the precious blood that frees us, glory only in his cross. The Twelfth Station. Jesus dies on the cross. When Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, I am thirsty. So they put a sponge of sour wine on a branch and held it to his mouth. When he had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Sentenced Friday morning, executed Friday afternoon. Only a Mary, along with the disciple he loved and some brave women, kept him company. Ridicule and searing pain. A victim of the system forgave his executioners. The innocent are still put to death with bullets, bombs, and bulldozers under the name of collateral damage. He drank the cup to the bitter end because he loved us to the end. Can you and I drink our cup? This is the cup the Father has given me, shall I not drink it? Let the cross be my salvation, Jesus' death my consolation, in that hour when I must die. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken off the cross. Joseph of Arimathea, a secret disciple of Jesus, came and removed his body. He and Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, wrapped the body in linen cloths. After thirty years, Mary had him in her arms again. All she could offer now was her presence and her lap and her embrace. She held him once at Christmas. She held him now at crucifixion. Silent, faithful Mother Mary. 
a wake, a funeral home moment, keeping vigil near a casket, thoughts of times gone by, of how it used to be, letting loved ones go to God. This is the cup the Father has given me. Shall I not drink it? The Fourteenth Station Jesus is buried in the tomb of a friend. There was a garden in the place where he was crucified. And in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there. Born in another's barn, buried in another's tomb. An unexpected offer of a tomb from Joseph of Arimathea, a tomb hewn out of rock, a stone rolled in place, a hurried burial before Sabbath. That Friday afternoon, the women took note of the tomb and how his body had been laid. They would return before dawn on Sunday. They buried him quickly, but not for long. He would burst the bonds of burial. By Sunday, the firstborn from the dead would leave behind an empty tomb. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. This is the cup the Father has given me, shall I not drink it? Mary, you were there as always, there when he was taking shape within your womb, when you gave birth to him in distant Bethlehem, when he asserted teenage independence in the temple, through all the years at Nazareth, when he had gone from home and Joseph was no longer there. There along the final journey, standing there at the foot of the cross. There now as you cradle him once more. Mary, survivor of Calvary, give us strength. Be there for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen.